And so I want to do a quick overview uh, overview of symmetry and asymmetry. Go into Photoshop, um, play around with some shapes. And uh, I also want to share with you just, again, Pinterest, um, looking at symmetry. These are just a few Im images that I've thrown into my uh, Pinterest board. I'm exhorting you to go out and find your own images because you can learn a lot just by studying uh, things. Now, keep in mind that these cards, these playing cards here, are not really formal symmetry. They're um, reflective symmetry or something corner to corner. So don't get confused by that, right? But, you know, we, we can do formal symmetry. Uh, or, well, last week we did formal symmetry, radial symmetry, crystallographic symmetry, the all over grid. Um, but more importantly, I want you to understand the kind of feeling that symmetry conveys, that feeling of stability, okay, of being centered, that front face kind of centered. Um, kind of sensibility versus okay well, there's nothing wrong with that I mean I love I love symmetry uh, versus um, let me just find asymmetry here versus something that is uh, and here you can see objects sculpture uh, again I don't have a huge archive but uh, I think you get the sense looking at paintings looking at designs looking at magazine covers um, you can get a sense of what of the difference between asymmetry and symmetry asymmetry dynamic movement thrusting forms okay um you'll see both of them what i tell people to do is go to barnes and noble or go to a bookstore and just browse through the magazine just look at magazine covers and ask yourself uh, are, are they designing with symmetry are they designing with asymmetry if they're designing with with symmetry, formal symmetry, what's the image they're trying to, what's the feeling they're trying to convey? The other thing I would have you do is, I just Googled corporate logos, symmetrical iconography. You can see there's a time and a place, and a lot of formal logos were used back maybe in the 50s or so, but you can see there's a time and a place for certain types of logos that want to convey stability, um, you know, a, a bank, a church maybe. Uh, although uh, maybe uh, with a, with some you know some of the new churches that want to break free and have you know a lot uh, a different completely different kind of view maybe they want more of an asymmetrical feel but again I'm thinking like things that want to be symmetrical or more solid you can put your trust in them okay think um, oh there's some car logos think Mercedes Benz right and also look at then the asymmetrical things. Can you imagine, you know, the Adidas? Uh, let me see. Uh, actually, no, Nike. Look at the Adidas logo is pretty symmetrical, right? Nike logo. Okay. So, uh, you can imagine um, the Nike logo. I mean, can you imagine it being symmetrical? The Nike logo, it's about that swoosh. It's about movement. It's about just do it. It's not just about just do it, right? It's got movement. It's got energy. So keeping that in mind, right? Do your research. Go and look around at examples. Keep in mind that if you are, again, for a beginning design, digital design course, for a beginning, like a color theory course where you're expected to make designs, like a Wuxia Wong kind of design or, or something, um, keep in mind that usually we stick with geometric shapes and we've covered these in other videos I'm going to create a new layer I have my option of using vector shapes versus raster shapes but what I don't want and let me just create one here what I see uh, you know sometimes in the class is somebody will post something like this and you know I mean embellished a little bit but they'll say well that's my asymmetrical design and yes, technically you could argue that it is a little bit off-center, that it's a little bit unweighted, but it's not going to win any awards in, in the, the, the face-off, in the voice-off, you know, in the asymmetrical design competition, right? So what you want to start thinking about is moving things. And we have looked, um, we have looked uh at images and dissected them and you know one of the um assignments that we had to do in school was to take an old master's composition and turn it into an abstraction so 
you know, maybe the manger is is just a block, you know, and the baby Jesus is is just you know a cylinder down there, and and you know the hill with uh, with the church on it up here is again just an abstract shape. It really helps to do that, and I've got examples of that that I can show you. But the way I would start out is um, I would think of my ingredients. Okay, think scale. Okay, so I've got a shape there, maybe a contrasting shape, but not, look at that. Even though that's technically asymmetrical, it's more approximately uh, symmetrical, right? So I want to make that even more symmetrical. So what would I do? How about scale? So think scale, number one, big, small, and also think how small? Don't just go, yeah, it's kind of big, you know, it's kind of medium, small. I mean, really, you know, push, push, um, push yourself in terms of like huge versus tiny, right? Look at that. Okay. So you can group things by shift clicking, right? Uh, address the edge this time. You know, if you've been putting everything within the canvas, just conveniently boxing it in, um, try to address the edges of the canvas. You know, here's this big looming shape that's coming in, just thrusting in from down, uh, from upper left. Here's a smaller shape coming in, thrusting in from lower right, right? So we've got this sense of, again, one of the terms that we've been using is movement. Down and up, and then the eye goes over, down and up. So uh, one thing that I uh, have always kind of thought of was uh, a thing that I think of as a, I call it a visual break. Okay, so how do I slow the eye down? Um, you know, here we've got this shape coming in, up, and immediately over. So maybe I put a little visual break in there, right? And again, I'm just doing this on the fly. I do not have a design, you know, in my head that uh, that I'm going to create here, but maybe there's another little visual break something to the eye comes down And it sees this and it comes up and instead of going over to this big shape. Whoa. Well, what's this? I'm gonna look at this for a minute. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting boom. So What's the other term focal point right now? There's not really a focal point in here, right? So Think of terms like variety Unity, I mean this is gonna have unity just because they're all geometric shapes, right? So uh, maybe there's, you know, a focal point somewhere in there. Okay, so real basic. And I could play with this and embellish it. And I could put um, maybe some smaller. I could start cutting into it, you know, with, um, uh, let me change the color of that. Um, with, you know, maybe cutting into that playing with my negative space. Remember negative space? Now all of a sudden, you know, I can start thinking of this black shape in here taking form behind this shape. Think of fluctuation. Uh, you know, not that more is better, but definitely take some time and, and, and love what you're doing here. Um, now, the last thing I would say as we're coming along and doing this, we've got movement, we've got change of scale, um, we've got a focal point. Um, oh, I was going to show you the rule of thirds. Okay, the rule of thirds is an old, I mean, you know, we were talking about the golden mean, the golden rectangle, and some of the proportional things that are, that are, that are, um, that have been used for a long time. Um, but the rule of thirds is something, I think I learned about it in photography. I'm going to just roughly divide this composition into thirds okay now supposedly according to the rules of composition if at the intersection where I've created these thirds you know where I've divided it into thirds at the intersection it's supposed to be a really good spot to create your focal point so if I'm gonna be putting my I don't want to stick things in the corners remember I've already talked to people about there's a tendency to want to put things in the corners things in the corners things in the corners I want to move this out and maybe I'll want to consider putting it right there 
and then you know I'll be done for now but hopefully that helps do your research get on Pinterest Google some stuff on the web look at logos Google asymmetry symmetry corporate logos magazine ad layout you know do some research uh, look around you and then play around with some designs and think scale think movement think emphasis think focal point all right